Before we dive into creating a material, I want to take a moment to discuss the type of workflow we will be using throughout this course. We will refer to this working concept as the material workflow, where we will build up height data from which we will then create maps such as normal, ambient occlusion, and roughness. From there, we will create the albedo or color and converge our maps into a single material node. We can then blend this material to create more complex materials. With the material workflow, we will start with height and work from grayscale to color. The idea is for us to build up the overall details that describe the surface attributes. Working grayscale is a more optimized way of working. It allows us to save more complex RGB computations for later stages in our graph. It's also easier for us to view all the details we are working to create without the distraction of color. This height workflow is very much like having a sculpting or modeling mindset as we build up shapes and patterns. Similar to working in ZBrush, you will start with a base shape and work to create large forms. Subdivide the mesh and work on medium level details. Subdivide again and work on smaller details. You are working from large, simple shapes to smaller, more complex details, and we can follow this same approach in Substance Designer. So now, let's just take a quick walkthrough of the graph that we're going to be creating here in this course. Now you can see, uh, as I've been talking about, we start here with a basic shape, and I'm viewing the output of this node here in my 2D view. And again, you can see this represents the overall kind of basic shape of this ground. Now, as I zoom out here on my graph, you can see that this next section is where I start working on large, medium, and, and kind of smaller shapes. So if we take a look, you can see that here I'm just adding some different nodes here to help build up these different shapes. And we'll double click this node and I'm viewing that here in my 2D view. So now we have some additional details that we're working on. Again, we have uh, some more nodes that we're adding to continue to build up some of these kind of medium to small level shapes. Now we come over here into another section where I'm going to start to work at incorporating some of these smaller details. So for example, here I have some of these basic rock shapes and we're going to be scattering these here across our height. So we're adding some rocks. Here we have some shapes that represent some twigs and we're also kind of scattering these across our ground. Now, if you'll look, you can see that here in this section, we start with our basic shape, large, medium, small, small details, and all of this here builds up to create our overall height map that we're working with. Again, here you can see that within this entire process, we've been working here in grayscale as we work to build up this detailed height map. Now, once we have the height map, we're going to go into our map creation phase, which then allows me to create things like my normal, my ambient occlusion, and my roughness map. Once we have these maps that make up the overall surface attribute of our material, we can start to take a look at creating our color. So for example, here you can see I have just some albedo here for my ground. Here's some albedo where I'm starting to add some color here for my rocks, as well as for the twigs. And once we have that, you can see this is when we go into the final phase, which is our material blending. So all of these maps, or all of this data, I'll say, flows into this single material blending node, which is our base material. And then from here, I can start to go through this material layering process. So we have our ground, then here we have our dirt, which is just a dirt material that we're just incorporating here to our ground. And then also I have a water material, which I'm also using to blend in here with my overall ground material. Finally, all of this data goes to the actual outputs. These are the textures that we could export out of Designer. In this video, we discuss the overall workflow we will be following to create a substance material. We will work grayscale to start to build up a detailed height map. From there, we will create our AO, roughness, and normal, followed by our color or albedo. In the next chapter, we will start the process of creating our first substance material.